from the Cyber Hub Bunker and Studio. You're tuning in to the Cyber Hub Podcast Tech Corner. And now, join me in welcoming your host and CISO, James Azar. RSA 2021, we are virtual, folks. Make sure to subscribe to the Cyber Hub Podcast for all the great content we've got coming your way this RSA. You don't want to miss it. I wish I could be in person. See you guys. Shake hands, hug, have a drink, a whiskey, a bourbon, or a scotch, and, and an espresso, right? But we can't. We're virtual. This next session coming up, also very different from my friends over at Centrify. We're going to be talking about DevOps, machine identities, and privileges. You're going to have two distinct people on this session, um, Scott England and David McNeely. So I hope I got Scott's name right. I've been trying not to butcher it, but it's but it's very hard sometimes. So I apologize ahead of time, folks. So check out this session over, uh, over uh, by Centrify here. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to tune in. If you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. If you're listening on your favorite podcast listening platform, please make sure to subscribe. Give us a five-star rating. We're going to kick this off over to the folks over at Centrify. Thank you. Welcome to RSA 2021. My name's Scott England with Thycotic Centrify. And today we're going to talk about DevOps, machine identities, and privileged access. I have with me today, Dave McNeely. Hi, I'm David McNeely. I'm Chief Technology Officer at Thycotic Centrify. Welcome, Dave. Appreciate you taking time with us today. Thanks. So as the world keeps developing and people are going more and more to the cloud, we see more teams switching to DevOps. And with that, uh, what security struggles do you see today with DevOps teams as it relates to our business? Well, actually, we hear quite a few different uh, challenges that organizations have. Uh, First of all, the adoption of automation just means that uh, they have to get used to deploying lots of servers into highly automated environments, which is very different than what they used to do on premises. And that automation in a lot of cases drives uh, the creation of scripts that deploy all of that technology. And in a lot of cases, those scripts need to have credentials within them. So there's uh, the, the challenge of like how to secure those credentials, how to enable the automation without overly exposing the environment. That brings up a great point. So how are those credentials exploited today? What exploits are are happening in the DevOps world? Sure, I mean, the the bad guys are doing the same kinds of things they always have been, which is to look for ways to get into the environment in order to go uh, access things that they're not supposed to in order to steal access to data. And in many cases, that means uh, they're looking for those service accounts, they're looking for those uh, credentials that are stored inside scripts as a way to gain access uh, to the infrastructure to be able to create new rogue systems that, that run their exploit tools in order to go find uh, data that's inside the, those cloud-based environments. Excellent, and, and so here at Psychotic Centrify, we're working every day to make our products better and better. How are we helping those DevOps teams accomplish that and get over those gaps? Yeah, you know, a lot of things that we've done in the last several releases, uh, things like uh, trying to help customers out with the automation in such a way that there's no need to put credentials inside the scripts, uh, ways to have your uh, automation CI/CD tooling make calls out to our platform to ask for dynamic ephemeral credentials mm-hmm. uh, to go do their task. Uh, there's other things that we created this new feature for cloud providers uh, in order to to go automatically find uh, EC2 instances, for example, on Amazon, and automatically take over the security on those, vaulting away the local accounts and setting them up for privileged access where humans actually need to log into those systems. So I know humans can do it, we have this for humans, but what about machine to machine? How do we handle that kind of communication? Well, there's uh, the more traditional way of handling machine to machine is to, to give a, an application or the machine that the application's running on a credential so that it can use that to go log into other things. And um, the, what we're trying to enable is the uh, developer to be able to take advantage of uh, ephemeral credentials, tokens that last a very short amount of time, which means they have to come ask for it. Uh, now, then, uh, of course, you need to look at the how strong can we make the client application asking for that credential that's uh, short-lived mm-hmm. in order for the application to work properly. We've, we've done some things to, to make it easy for the app developer to make API calls to us and ask for those uh, temporary credentials, uh, whether it's agentless technologies or if it's uh, an environment where you have the ability to install the Centrify client um, on that system and set up delegated machine credentials. So delegated machine credentials uh, or machine identities, how does that differ from service accounts? 
Well, it's, uh, it's different because the computer itself and the client is going to manage the, the machine account. In other words, when you spin up a brand new computer, that new computer is going to get an account uh, with the, the identity provider that Centrify mm -hmm. provides in order to man manage the communication authentication that, uh, back and forth. And uh, instead of exposing the, that credential to the application, we make it easy for the application to ask for an ephemeral token and our client will go get the ephemeral token on behalf of the application and hand it back. And therefore, the application doesn't need access to the machine's identity. That's very different from take a service account and mm -hmm. go create a service account in a vault and then take the credential and then hand it back to the application. In that case, the application now has the credential that uh, is going to be as long lived as the job needs, but it's, it's less managed. Now, I know a lot of people are still using uh, service accounts to do their applications and to do their automation. Can we handle that as well? Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, that's the, the base level that most people start from is to use uh, service accounts and, and let the centralized management system reach out and rotate those credentials and all other applications that depend on that application um, in such a way that uh, we keep them all in sync. It's just a, quite a bit more effort if you think about uh, the, the task at hand for a vault to be able to do that work as opposed to the ability to go get a, a short-lived credential and use it for that duration of time you need it, and then it's no longer good. Right. So I hear a lot of people talking about native tools, and each cloud provider has their own native tools. Uh, how does our solution here at Thicotic Centrify better than the native tools that are provided by AWS and Azure, Google, and other cloud providers such as that? I think a lot of times it depends on the uh, construction and development of the application and how the applications, uh, what task it's uh, trying to provide. Most organizations start out on one cloud provider and then they get very familiar with those tools and, and uh, start to use those particular tools. But as the organization grows or as um, in some cases the finance department comes back and tells you we got a better deal on a different cloud provider <laughs> you know then then you're faced with how do i take what i built on this provider and make it work on the other provider mm. and at that point you realize there's more cloud providers than just one out there so you may a lot of organizations get to the point where they decide they need to design their solution in such a way that it works across multiple cloud providers that gives them flexibility and the freedom to move from one to the other or to play them against each other to get a better uh, better pricing for the costs. Right, now some people are actually using multiple cloud providers for their same application. Heaven mm -hmm. forbid someone like an Amazon or Microsoft has an issue, they would be uh, have their application spread across both cloud providers. Can we still play in that environment as well? Oh, absolutely, and, and in fact, um, most of our customers uh, try to do that, set up their application in such a way that it does uh, can be deployed across multiple cloud providers. We do that ourselves, by the way. We run on both AWS and Azure. There's reasons to have them on both. We sometimes run across customers that have a preference for one versus the other, but in a lot of cases, it, it's simply a matter of uh, being able to deploy the software on multiple cloud providers, being able to take advantage of the features that each may have, um, as well as the uh, hosting uh, locations where they have their data centers and their regions set up. Because they, in all cases, they're very different. And some providers may have more uh, locations in specific countries versus the, the other provider. Right. So there's a lot of reasons why people choose to, to go with multi-cloud providers. And with that, there's got to be some best practices that are out there, especially when it comes to machine to machine and with everybody using microservices and Kubernetes. What are some of the best practices that the Kytec Centrify can offer to our customers when they're thinking about how they're going to go about this task? A lot of the uh, best practices that we set up for human access to resources are very similar when we talk about machine to machine. In other words, make sure that you have a very strong identity. Uh, just like uh, you know, we get an employee badge and there's an official badging process, that's, that's how we get our initial identity. The, the virtual machines are created with an identity and that is their strongest identity. They, they can also be provided an identity, much like us going getting a passport. Uh, mm -hmm. I have to go prove my identity before I get a passport. And that, that gives me a strong identity that from that point forward I can then use. Um, in order to establish stronger authentication, we ideally want to use that strong mechanism for authentication from you know, one computer to the next and uh, use short-lived credentials. Uh, which is as close as to multi-factor authentication we can get for non-human type access. Right. Very strong identity and uh, machine-to-machine -machine, uh, federated style authentication. 
And then uh, just adhering to the concepts of uh, just in time and just enough. And that really just means make sure that the access from a resource to its particular uh, uh, back end that it may need if it's a client service that needs to access a database uh, to make sure that that is uh, very short lived and uh, doesn't need to live for very beyond the duration of time for that, that transaction. So where do you see the future of this going? I mean, you're, you're our chief technical officer here at Dicotic <laughs> Centrify. How do you see machine to machine credentials going forward in the future? I do see, um, you know, a lot of the, the focus is on uh, making sure that there are uh, more types of credentials uh, that are supported between the various um, <clears throat> systems as uh, they, they need to authenticate. There's a lot of um, customers that are moving to microservices architectures and, and the need to move to microservices means that you end up with uh, all of these applications, uh, these small portions of the application needing to talk to each other. So in that kind of a federated environment, you end up with um, a potentially thousands to millions of uh, microservices that need to talk to each other. So in that case, we just need to get a lot more granular with respect to the mm -hmm. access permissions and also support uh, you know, the architectures that the customer may have. A lot of customers are moving, like we said earlier, to multi-cloud, but I still hear a lot of customers that have hybrid cloud, which means they end up with some portions of the application running in the cloud environment and some portions that are running uh, within the data center. And in that case, you still need to handle the authentication you know, from uh, one platform to the other. Understood. Well, we really appreciate you taking time to talk with us today, Dave. And thank you everyone for taking time to listen to us. Uh, I hope you got a lot out of this. If you want more information, please visit www.centrify.com and reach out to your salesperson again if you have further questions. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast and share it with your friends and colleagues and get all the latest information at cyberhubpodcast.com. Thank <laughs> you.